okay? Hello everyone, my name's Crystal and I'm an artisan here at the Crawley Hobby Craft Store and I'm here to talk about all things home decor using some of the amazing products from our art event which is currently running through until uh, September. Uh, so just a reminder for everybody that we still have all of our sanitation points here in store. They're for your hands and for your baskets and we are encouraging customers to continue wearing your masks if you're able to do so. Um, also here to remind you about our Artist of the Year competition. Um, there are three categories. There is adult, student and junior and you could win a £300 art bundle. Uh, to find details about on how to enter, if you go to the Facebook page for Hobbycraft, there's full terms and conditions and there'll also be a comment in the uh, link below the video that we're running right now to tell you how to enter. Um, also today I'm going to be talking to you about how to make this floral letter holder. I don't know if you can see that just there. There we go. I'll be showing you how to make that using Pebio art paints very soon. And uh, just to talk you through some of the other items that we have that this technique can be used on to decorate your home. We have a very large range of wooden blanks, whether that's the letters. We also have wooden things like uh, this box here. So I hate to mention the C word, but anybody thinking about Christmas, if you were thinking about doing a Christmas Eve box, this would be great for that. And the acrylic paints are fantastic for painting those. Uh, we also have a range of ceramic blanks and things like this slate sign. And for the artists among you, all of our canvases, just a little example just here, they're all on three for two at the moment and will continue to be so during the art event. So. With that in mind, let's get cracking on the demo. So this is what I'm going to be making for you today, as I said. Uh, this is decorated using a floral folk art technique. It's very, very straightforward. I'm not really a one for painting, so if I can do it, then literally anybody can do it. And obviously you may not have the equipment to follow along with me tonight, but there are full instructions available on the Hobbycraft Ideas Hub, and a link will be provided in the comments for you, so you can go and check that out. Um, so let's get started. What are you going to need? So to begin with, what I've used as the base is one of our uh, 12 by 12 birch art panels. You're also going to need a strip of basswood. And then to decorate, I used a kid's brush pack. This is because it came with some foam applicators as well as brushes. Then I have some graduate artist brushes for the finer details. A selection of Pebio paints. These are great, the colour on those is really, really good. And then to do the fine details, the smaller flowers that you can see, um, I'm going to use a paper embossing tool, but there are alternatives that you can use, and I'll talk about those with you in just a moment. So, to get started, you're going to take your art panel, and in order to create the lip that you can see on the inside, just down here, uh, we're going to insert some wood. So you're going to need a ruler. So if you take your ruler and measure the inner gap, now they should all be the same, so I know that this is 27 and a half centimetres wide. There we are. So mark out 27 and a half centimetres on your basswood strip and cut down. I've cut mine using a handsaw. You can actually do it with a craft knife as well. It will take a little bit longer to get through the wood, but it is achievable. And then you're going to take some wood glue And then just glue the two short edges of your basswood cut strip, like so, and the long edge all the way down. And then it's a bit of a snug fit because I was very accurate with my cutting, so bear with me for a second. Oh, there we are. You're going to fix that inside. Oh, blimey. Don't know my own strength, clearly. There we are. Fix that inside your wood panel, like so. And then allow to dry. So give it a good squeeze. You're going to want to take off any excess glue, just because that will leave a slightly different finish with your paint. So there we are. So once you've got your 
blank assembled, so this is the only thing sort of structurally that you need to do, you're now going to paint. So I've used one of the foam applicators from the children's brush set. Uh, this is because it's just a bit quicker, to be honest. So load up. I've used uh, Pebio Grey as the base. Obviously, you can choose any colour that goes along with your home decor. I happen to have a grey front room, which is why I chose grey. And then loading up your foam applicator, simply cover absolutely every surface with the acrylic paint. Now, the good thing about the Pebio paints is that they have a really, really strong um, colour to them. So they don't need a lot to give you a good coverage. I'm obviously not going to paint the whole thing today, but you can see the strength of the colour there coming through already. Um, so you're going to want to cover every surface. So you may want to use a brush from your brush pack to get into some of the nooks and crannies around your letter holder. But once you've completed the whole thing, and you may want to do two coats just to make sure that the coverage is really nice and tight, then it will look something like this. Ignore the grey paper that's there because that's covering something that's going to be shown in a little while. So once you've got to that stage, you're now ready to actually do your floral art technique, uh, your folk art technique. So to begin with, as you can hopefully see on this panel here, let me just move my paint out of the way. Um, I've done mine in a heart shape on the inside. You can do any shape that you like. A circle would work really, really well. Um, you could do a basic flower shape. Um, but I've gone with a heart, so I've cut myself a template, just folded a piece of A4 card in half, like so, drew half a heart shape, and there we go. So now I'm gonna lay that on the inside of my panel like that so you want to try and center it as best you can between the top and the lip and then take a pencil and we're going to draw an outline of the heart we don't want to do a solid line because you don't want to have any pencil showing on your finished work so just every couple of centimeters or so I'm just going to make some little pencil marks all the way around so that once I've removed my template the outline is there but it's going to be very subtle so just getting all the way back to the top there we go so once I remove my template hopefully you can see on the camera there just a very faint outline all the way around so now that we've got to this point you're now ready to start doing your floral design so I'm going to take out my piece of card so that I can show you exactly how to do that. So here we are, there's our heart shape. So this is where you're going to need a nice selection of paints. So I've used pink, red and yellow. They are going to be my flower base colours. And then I'm also going to use a green for the foliage. And you definitely 100% also need a white. And at the moment, these are all half price in our art sale. So at two pounds for a tube, they're really, really good value for money. And so to create the floral technique, as you can see on here, the very small roses, the tiny little swirls is what I'm gonna be showing you how to do first. And I use a paper embossing tool. This is a favorite of mine. And um, these are available on the Hobbycraft website, but if you can't get hold of one of these or you don't have one of these to hand, there are some alternatives that you can use. Um, I don't know if you can see on the camera, if I hold that up just there, it's the small ball end, which is gonna help us create that rose pattern. So there are alternatives that you can use. You can use um, plastic headed pins. They would work just as well. Let me show you that one there. It's maybe going to be a little bit more difficult simply because you're holding the pin as opposed to an actual almost pencil-like one with the uh, embossing tool. And then also in our baking section, we have um, icing tools. And within the icing tool pack, there is this one here, which has a hook on one end. And then also the little ball joint just on the end of the icing tool there, which you can use. But today I'm going to use my paper embossing tool to show you how to create your design. 
So I have a selection of paints squeezed out ready to show you. So to create the, the floral swirls, you can see, you're going to take one of your chosen colours. I'm going to use red to begin with and just dot red paint following your outline that you've created. You're also going to need some tissue to hand just to clean off your tool in between paint colours because once you've done a few and I only recommend doing maybe three or four at a time because you don't want your paint to start to dry. So then next to each of the coloured dots place another dot of white paint literally right next to it. I'm going to clean my tool again. Now as you can see on the other end of my paper embossing tool, there's a much smaller head, which is what I'm going to use to swell the paints together. You could either use the point of the pin or carry on using the same tool that you've been doing, but make sure it's nice and clean. And then to create the flower, simply just mix the two together. I'll try and keep my hand out of the way a little bit so you can see. So it's literally just going round and round in the blobs of paint, like so. So that's how you create your small floral design. Now to add to that, we're going to do some foliage. It's basically the same technique, but this time, instead of putting our dots very close together, we're going to put them maybe a millimetre or two apart. We want to be nice and generous with the blobs. So hopefully you can see on the camera there, they're not quite close together. And then using the end of your tool again, drag down towards the center, and that is what will create your leaf pattern. So to show you that again, two blobs of paint, quite generous, and then drag down to the center and down to the center, and that will create your leaf. So I'll show you a couple of the roses again. This time I'm going to use some yellow. And as I said, no more than sort of three or four at a time, because especially when you're painting onto wood, although you've done your base coat of gray, it does tend to suck up pretty quick, which means that the paint will start to dry too quickly for you to get the good, a good swirl. It will start to crack a little bit, so as quick as you can. So using the fine end again, just swirl the two together until you're happy with it rose looking shape and there we are you're going to go all the way around your heart shape going in with foliage and different colored flowers all the way around and then to add a little bit of depth and detail you might want to just do a bit of an abstract spots in different colors that you've used all the way around so I like to use the greens and the whites like so Maybe do one in smaller, so you can have an even smaller dot. There we go. Until you've completed your whole heart shape. And then it will look like this. So as you can see there, we've decorated the whole of the heart. So as I said before, you could go for a completely different shape on the inside. Circles would work just as well, or flower, anything you like, really. And then using the same technique, you can carry on decorating the outer edges as much or as little as you like. And this really is so straightforward. It, I described it when I uh, was talking to somebody about this as blobs with style. So it is literally just tiny blobs of paint and it's all the mixing, the swirling together that gives you that lovely effect. And it makes me look much more talented than I actually am because if you actually asked me to paint a real life looking rose, I definitely wouldn't be able to do that. So there we go, I'll put a couple of flowers on. So I'm just gonna add some foliage. I love this green. 
There we are. Just going to pop those in there like that. Add a few more blobs with style. Do some yellow this time. And you can literally just keep building up until you're happy with it. There's no right or wrong, just keep adding as much as you like all over. You can decorate the whole edge if you want to, or just the corners as I'm doing here. And the most important thing to remember is to keep cleaning your tool, whichever you decide to use, whether it's a pin or an embossing tool or the icing tool. If you keep it nice and clean, it will just give you a slightly better finish. And there we go. So once you've got to that, as you can see here, hopefully the corners are all decorated on my one here. Let me just bring that into shot a little bit more. So I've done all four corners of mine. And it's at this point then that we're going to create the central rows. So this is more the, the folk art, traditional folk art. So this is what you'd find on canal boats and things like that. Um, and basically it's um, creating the flower using layers of paint. So you don't have to do any blending or anything like that. It's very, very straightforward. So I'm going to switch from using my embossing tool to, where are my paint brushes? Where did I put those? <laughs> there we go. I was being overly efficient and overly tidy. Here we are. I do that at home a lot as well. My other half tells me off all the time because he'll put something down and then I tidy it away. Apparently that's not very good. There we go. So I'm using graduate paint brushes. There's a great pack of four. Um, so you've got all of the paint brushes that you need within this actual pack. And I'm gonna be using graduate brush number four initially. Uh, so to create the central flower that you can see on here, initially what you're gonna do is you're gonna start with your white paint to create the flower base. So within the heart shape that you've created using the embossing technique, the embossing tool and the little dots, we're going to do just a simple circle shape and it doesn't have to be perfect, which is probably just as well because my hands are shaking a little bit. So there we go. Just fill that in. Has to be, doesn't have to be perfect as I said. Just make sure it's nice and white. And then on the outer edge, I'm going to now use my fine brush, which is the smaller one within your pack, which is five tenths, I believe. Bear with me a second, it's stuck in the packet. There we go, got there eventually. So this is the very, very teeny tiny one if you can see on that one there it's almost like a little fine liner and I just find it I've, I've tried many many times to create leaf shapes and I always struggle they just end up looking like a six-year-old has done them so if I find if I do the fine liner it makes it a little bit easier so at maybe like 10 o'clock and two o'clock on your flower against your white circle just create a rough leaf shape like so, fill that in. So that's one side. And then the other. Filling in as you go. We've had a few questions, Crystal. Fabulous, um, yes, fire away. So, Mitra has asked, did you do any wood finishing on top of the acrylic paint? No, I haven't done anything. There's nothing to protect it once it's painted. Um, I use acrylic paints a lot on wood and I do a lot of uh, children's base products and I found that actually you don't really need to have anything on top to protect it. You could put a layer of varnish on if you wanted to, so a clear satin varnish would look amazing, um, but I haven't used anything here today. Um, and Gemma has asked, would this technique also work with metallic acrylic paints? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So obviously if you're mixing with the white, um, you might lose a little bit of that metallic, but it would work just as well, any colour at all. 
Um, I would go for definitely for an opaque finish paint. There are some paints that have the, a transparent finish where you can build up the colour over different layers. So you're going to want to stick with opaque paints for this technique. Cool. And not a question as such, but Anne has said, that is so clever. I love the Pebio acrylic paints. Oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so do we. Right, so we have our flower base. We have our leaves on the outside. So to create the centre of the flower now, I'm just going to create a little highlight to make it look like the centre of a flower. So I'm going to go with a red. And I'm just going to create a small circle at the top there, like so. And now it comes to the petals themselves. So this is where the layering comes in. Now, normally, if I was, if we had time, I would, uh, I would always advise that you allow this bit to dry. Um, obviously, with the magic of television, that's not possible. <laughs> So I'm going to go straight over the top of the white. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a slightly lighter pink than I have at the moment. So I'm just mixing the darker pink that I have with some white. I found when I did a couple of practices of these, I think it was because I had a gray base. Initially, I, I chose red the colour of the petals that I'm about to show you but it was a little bit too bright it was a little bit too strong I think it needed something a little bit more delicate so when I did it again and chose pink it actually looked much better but traditionally on canal boat art it's very very strong colours so it would have been red but for this I've kind of plagiarised it a little bit and done my own thing so to create the petals I'm going to show you on a piece of card first so let me just move this out of the way You're going to want to take your brush and push down and then lift up. So I'll show you that again. It does take a little bit of practice. So before you do this on your wooden piece, you might want to have a scrap piece of paper handy so you can have a go at this beforehand. So push down at the start to create the thickness of the petal at the top. And as you come down, lift away and that will give you a nice little sort of tail effect at the bottom. So once you feel like you've got the hang of that, then it'd be time to pop your petals onto your wooden piece. So I'm just going to load up my brush again. And it may seem counterintuitive to have lots of paint on your brush, but actually this is going to work in your favour for these. So nice, heavy on the paint almost. And then you're going to want to create six petals. So you could do, and they come in pairs. So the first pair would go around your highlight like so and then another two halfway down Sorry, Crystal, could you put the reels towards you just there? yeah that better for you yeah yep. so the last of our pair at the bottom so pushing down much harder this time to create a bit of a thicker base and then last one there we go so that again at this point I would recommend that you let it dry a little bit because now we're going to add some highlights to those petals that you've just created so this time I'm going to go back to my very fine brush and again it works a little bit better when it's dry but if you do do it when it's wet, you do get a kind of colour blend effect, which can actually look quite nice. It just depends which you prefer. So again, I'm going to load up my brush fairly heavily. Sorry again, can you just bring it towards the And then, back? yeah, there we are. Yeah. And then, same technique as before, push down and lift up. And in each of those petals that you've painted, I'm going to pop a highlight. And like I said, keep your brush loaded with paint. It does actually make it a lot easier. As you can see there, because my paint's not dry, it's picking up some of the green from underneath. And last ones. There we go. And I'm going to add some detailing to the leaf as well. 
and I found on the leaf it looked a little bit better if you did have a bit of a colour blending effect so what I like to do is pick up a little bit of the yellow paint like so and then just ever so slightly touch the red and pull that down so when you paint onto your leaf to add some detail you should get oh, a little bit of both come through hopefully you can see that on there it's I didn't have enough paint on my brush then but and one tip I would say for doing this technique is you have to commit so once you've painted a line don't try and go back over it again little imperfections are what give it a little bit of character but if you try and correct anything that you think is a mistake it's not going to look as nice so I would just go with what you've done and embrace it so there we are that's how you create your central rows and then if you wanted to you can go back to your tool that you were using before and I'm just going to dab in some white add in some detailing on my leaves and maybe some central dots above the center of my flower almost like stamen there we go how are we doing for time Tom uh, we're on 31 minutes. oh my goodness me I'll be really wow okay <laughs> so there you go that's how you create your floral letter holder thank you very much for spending some time with me this afternoon or this evening I should say so just as we're going to come to a close I'd uh, just like to remind everybody that there are hundreds of ideas available on our Hobbycraft Hub and our YouTube channel as well. Don't forget about our Artist of the Year competition. For full details, go to our Facebook page. And please do join us next week where Beth Ainsworth from the Preston Store is going to be doing some screen printing live with you on Facebook. Thank you so much for joining me this evening and see you again soon. <laughs>